welcome back to Beyond the Veil Tarot and Astrology. My name is Candice Marie. Thanks for joining me. I'll be your astrologer today. Well, guys, it's that time again. We've got a full moon that's going to be happening in the next week or so. Wanted to get this out. i um, all about the full moon in Pisces. If you're new to my channel, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know where you're tuning in from, and do not forget to subscribe to my channel so you're alerted when I have new content that's coming out. Those of you guys who are already subscribers and members, thank you so much for returning. It's nice to see you again. I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, well, we've got a full moon in Pisces, really illuminating the access between Virgo and Pisces, both mutable signs. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one, so let's go ahead and dive right into it. The full moon's going to be hitting on September 10th, 2022 at 2.59 a.m. Pacific Time, 5.59 a.m. Eastern Time. So obviously I know we have people watching from all over the world. Adjust your time zones accordingly. But one thing I'll tell you guys is this is going to be a full moon that's going to linger for a little while. You're probably going to be feeling it a couple days after just due to the lunar transits. Now, this particular full moon is going to be at 17 degrees of Pisces. So 17 um, has some kind of connection to Leo. It is about um, enchantment and romance and creativity. Um, and yeah, all, all of the fun kind of Leo things. Those of you guys who are not aware, I work with degree astrology, so I break it down a little bit further. So yes, it's in Pisces, but it's got a little bit of like a solar flavor to it. And the Deccan that this is associated with in Pisces is actually the moon. So it's a little bit more mysterious, a little bit more magical, all the things that we would expect from a Pisces full moon. If you guys look back to the new moon that we had on March 2nd, 2022, um, that was a new moon in Pisces at 12 degrees. We are now wrapping up what has been six months worth of work, wherever Pisces is in your natal chart. So take a look, see where Pisces is, which house is it? This is the um, area of your life where you're going to be seeing some kind of completion. We have full moons every 28 days. It is kind of that conclusion um, in regards to what we've been really working on for really the immediate last two weeks. Now, what people don't realize is where a new moon is planting seeds, a full moon is a completion. And after the full moon is like the breakdown or the dismantling where we sort and sift and decide what we're letting go of, what we're releasing as we prepare for the new moon that will be coming in Libra um, in just a couple of weeks time. Now, Pisces is, um, like I said, a, a, a water sign, a mutable water sign associated with psychic dreams, the astral plane, hidden spaces, the subconscious. And it is ruled by Neptune, which I kind of view as the soul. Now, mutable signs are changeable, flexible, they adapt. And in this case, connected to um, the planet Neptune, it's about dissolving and releasing and letting go. Now, we know that water signs are deeply emotional. They're psychic, in tune, and very empathic. Now, I look at both of the rulers when I'm looking at lunation. So we're going to be not just looking at Neptune and Pisces, which the moon is conjunct, but we're also going to be looking at Jupiter, which is retrograde in the sign of Aries. Now, the sun in Virgo, which is illuminating the full moon, right? The sun always opposes the moon during a full moon. That is that like, complex, intense opposition between the two signs that we see play out. Um, is all about routines, habits, right? New solutions, improvements, things that we're tweaking. So a full moon in, in this sign is really highlighting, well, a couple of different things, but it's, it's really highlighting what we have to kind of dissolve, let go of, where we need to cut ourselves a little slack, where we need more rest, possibly recuperation, some time one-on-one -on -one in meditation or with our spirit guides or just anything that's going to allow us to dissolve and melt away. So it's kind of weird in the midst of Virgo season, we have this full moon and we're gonna have a lot of people that are gonna be like, I need to sleep in, I need a break, I need to take a day off. Um, and really feeling like we need to rest and recharge or find that we need to reconnect in some way, become re-inspired. Now I'm gonna read to you guys the uh, Sabian symbol for this particular full moon. It's at 17 degrees and 41 minutes. So we're gonna read 18 degrees of Pisces. If you guys are new to my channel, you're not aware, I like working with the Sabian symbols. I feel like it gives us a little food for thought, something that we can kind of mull over as we're looking at the aspects for the full moon. If you're interested in this book or any of the other books that I recommend on my channel, check out my links below. You can find my Amazon list and all of the things that I'm currently reading. All right, so we're gonna read 18 degrees of Pisces, a gigantic tent. 
The theme is the reveal. The symbol speaks to gaining um, a holistic understanding of life through dramatic intensification or experience. Thus, the image of a gigantic tent alludes to integration, the process of pulling various pieces together into a unified and organized whole. In the 1931 mimograph version of the symbol referred to as a, a revivalist tent, it was a revision of ideas back to source or a renewal of faith. In the 1953 version, the image was described as a circus tent. That focus was on excitement and sharing skills and risks that brings an individual renewed insight into his capacity for putting his world in order as well as his immediate entertainment. Viewed from a modern perspective, this commentary appropriately describes the effects of an emotional high that results in a quickening of spirit or a sudden rebirth of self-confidence or self-esteem. On a practical level, this symbol can refer to any gathering where participants are inspired and stirred into action through an appeal of the emotions. At its positive, its highest, the symbol represents a special talent for getting things done by motivating or stimulating others to rally in some cause at hand. We want to watch for negative um, psychic manipulation, grandstanding, rebel rousing, or instigation. The accent is on getting it all together. You could be involved in some community affair that requires you to juggle your priorities. Your greatest advantage lies in getting organized. Put, force, put first the first things and the rest will fall into place. Grouping things will help. And just watch away for getting uh, carried away with a false sense of importance. Um, avoid being too loud or monopolizing on the conversation. Give others a chance to express themselves and be willing to share the stage. I like the idea of a Pisces full moon and like the connection to like the like the mystery and like the wondery of like being under the circus tent, like being able to see all of the enchanting things, the acts, and like really feeling inspired and um, being a part of a group that's like witnessing or watching something that's just super unreal. I mean, I think, you know, Pisces can be that, right? Pisces can be um, anything that is enchanted or isn't entirely too clear and it's mystical and like magical in some way. So some of the themes that I actually uh, just noted for this full moon, it's funny, I, I, wrote, I was meditating on this and I was like, Practical magic, and then I started thinking about the movie, you know, I'm sure every witchy woman knows exactly what I'm talking about when I say midnight margaritas. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are having a, f a few in the midst of this uh, very Neptunian moon. But practical magic in a sense of where Virgo shows up and it serves, right? It creates that um, system, that, that uh, you know, layer of to-do list things that we have to get done. It puts everything into order to make the show uh, possible. It's all the behind the scenes things that are kind of going on so we can actually watch the film, right? Everything in the background. So all the busy work, all of that stuff. But when I say practical magic, I think it's working with the energy of all of the placements that we have in, in Virgo. There's a very strong mercurial energy. I'll get to that in a second with some of the mutable placements um, and where we can make magic happen in our everyday lives in a very practical way. And this can be in our routines, right? Finding inspiration in our daily routines and finding new innovative ways um, to bring a little bit of like magic fairy dust into our everyday life, even if we're doing practical stuff like folding laundry, cleaning the house, you know, walking the dog, whatever. It's finding ways to find um, the magic and all of that stuff. Um, and also, I think another thing that comes up for me during this full moon, just because of the conjunctions to Neptune, we're starting to see some uh, squares to Neptune, we've got oppositions, um, is everything what it seems, right? So in the midst of all the mystery and magic, um, are we seeing things clearly, the lens that we're looking through, right? Is it fogged? Are we looking at the world through rose-colored glasses? Are there things that we're avoiding to acknowledge or avoiding to kind of handle or take care of? And where can that actually be a positive thing? Because it can allow us to step back from stuff that we're kind of white knuckling in our life right now so we can find more room for inspiration. Now, mutable squares or you know, mutable aspects in astrology always talk about transitions. These are the signs that give way to the change in seasons. We're getting ready to wrap up the summertime here in the Northern Hemisphere. We're going to be heading towards the um, fall equinox, right? Pretty soon when the sun goes into Libra. So this is about transitions. And in the midst of those transitions, when we don't know what's next, when we don't know if something's gonna work out, if we're gonna get the job, if the relationship's you know, gonna be able to be mended, it's allowing us to leave room and hold, faith, hold space for faith and inspiration. And so that's why I really like this full moon. I think it's gonna give us the opportunity to do that. Um, and naturally with a full moon lunation, we see a natural completion 
but especially in the sign of Pisces, because Pisces is um, traditionally associated with the 12th house, where everything kind of comes out in the cosmic washing machine, right? This is where we see natural endings and things that go on kind of in uh, back rooms and stuff that happens in our subconscious or when we're sleeping, it's the tarot reading we get, it's the insight that we have when we're um, with, with a healer, when we're working with a therapist. And Pisces and Virgo together um, do represent this energy of sacrifice and surrender, right? So Pisces knows a little bit about sacrifice, but I really look at Virgo as being like sacrificing the time, the energy, the work, everything that we've been putting forth, making it possible for us to get all of our stuff done so we can rest and recuperate at the end of our busy day. I see the astrology, you know, of all the 12 zodiac signs is really more six that have polarity. So you see really similar, similar characteristics in the two. And I feel like this is going to be a time during the full moon where we really need to give ourselves time to rest and recuperate. We're not overdoing it, right? We're not overworking. We're not over exercising and we're allowing ourselves to rest and recharge. But with this theme of sacrifice and surrender, the question is, is um, what we're surrendering to may not necessarily be a person or a situation, but I, ideally it's like realizing what we can't change. That's what we're going to be, you know, kind of giving, giving that up to spirit saying, I don't know the way forward. I don't know how it's going to happen. I know that this is an issue or I know I got to fix this or I got to clean this up and really holding space for your spirit team to be able to intervene to kind of help you in the process so we can really let go of whatever we can't change or even whatever we feel like is not perfect, right? This, the Virgo sun is definitely gonna be highlighting that. And as we retreat, we're taking a step back and consciously using this Neptunian energy in a positive way, like dream interpretation, rest, meditation, you know, anything that we would be doing in a healing space, a temple, a spa, a church. It's a sacred space whenever we're working with 12th house energy but also in the midst of being able to really highlight our dreams with that moon, Neptune and Pisces, we're working with the grounded, practical, mercurial energy of Virgo that's using logic and planning and the willingness to change and make things happen to manifest our dreams and desires. There's a lot of pivoting with this full moon. I think it's just kind of expected with some of the squares between um, some of the mutable planets. One thing you want to watch for whenever we have some really strong Neptune energies is self undoing, right? Bad habits, energy drains, um, uh, isolating ourselves. You know, it's like not wanting to get out of bed, keeping the covers over our head, not wanting to uh, participate, checking out, you know, drinking too much and all of the bad habits and things that can lead to a lot of um, energetic and emotional or psychological imbalances. So like that's the darker side of Neptune. Now later, um, within the next day, because this moon is at 17 degrees, we're going to be seeing that all day on the 10th and then into the 11th, the moon is coming into a conjunction with Neptune, right? So it's gonna feel like a little bit of an extended full moon for many of us. We might be feeling it more on the back end. There might be a sense of being like, you know what, I gotta let this go. I can't, this is too much. I gotta call it a night. And you might just notice a day or two of some wonky energy levels. So let's take a look um, at some of the aspects. And I think probably the, the main theme for me, like I said, is gonna be these mutable squares. So if you guys have been watching some of the videos I've been putting out, talked a little bit about Mars through Gemini, how we would see a number of these squares. I talked about um, you know, the month ahead, how we're gonna see planets go into Virgo, oppose Neptune and square Mars, which we're realizing things are changing. And it can be good for um, working with constructive criticism. It can be challenging because we see some grumpiness from Mars and Gemini in square to all these planets that are in Virgo, which is gonna feel very critical, very harsh, very challenging, but it's been very detail oriented. I think I've, I've, I don't have any mutable planets in my, in my chart at all. Um, and Virgo is, is my 12th house. So I have a really difficult um, time with that energy. And I have found that the more that I'm stepping back in the midst of these transits and just letting the chips fall where they may and assessing things as we go, knowing that this is the period to um, have room for improvement, right? Improving our health or diet, making changes to the way that we're feeling in our bodies. We can work with the squares. We can also work with the Mercury retrograde to come back into center and realize that uh, we don't have to be so hard on ourselves, right? And that it is possible to change our mind and that the world around us is changing and that it's possible to adapt to that and not be too rigid. 
September is like a little slice of peace in the midst of these eclipses that are going to be coming in October and November. So I'm really pleased to kind of see it, uh, a, a decent, a decent full moon that's going to be taking place. Now, when I say mutable T square, I'm going to show you guys what I mean. We've got the moon here in the sign of Pisces. Okay. And we know that it's conjunct because it is right within several degrees of Neptune also in Pisces. Now the full moon is the moon in opposition to the sun. And um, if, you're, if you're looking at this from like a, a um, astronomy perspective, the sun is actually highlighting and bringing attention to the moon, right? So we're using that energy physically from the sun to highlight the moon. Also, when the sun is in one sign, the earth is in another. Surprise, not a lot of people know that. So we've got the earth that's going to be also in the same sign as the moon and Neptune. So that means our experience here is otherworldly, right? There can be more magical things happening. You know, Neptune rules all of the different um, dimensions and, and, and ghosts and paranormal things and psychic things and, and the connection that we have to the ethers. So the veil is going to feel thinner um, during the time of this moon. Now, a T-square, is when you have a planet that is both at a hard 90 degree angle, sorry, I'm trying to do this, uh, with two other placements. So we have the opposition of the sun and the moon, and then we have it coming into the square. So 90 degree angle here, 90 degree angle here, and then we have 180 degree opposition. So kind of like when you're driving along and you, you see an accident where somebody gets T-boned, right? It just wham, hits you out of nowhere. You don't see it coming. That's how a T-square works. And you want to take into consideration, um, you know, what is it? Is it cardinal? Is it fixed? Is it mutable? So this mutable square basically says, uh, as a result of the full moon, something is, is wrapping up, something is closing out. Uh, do we feel emotional about it? Is it time to let it go? Are we scared? Are we acting out? Are we melting down? And the, the Mars transit is actually going to be what is T-squaring this moon. Now it's not exact, right? But it, but it is within about six degrees, so it's enough to feel it. And a couple hours prior, this will be really late here on the West Coast on the 9th, going into the morning of the 10th, the moon will actually square Mars as well, which is kind of emotionally combative. Thankfully, a lot of us are gonna be asleep unless you're really early or you live in other parts of the world. So waking up, I could see that there could be some grumpiness, there can be some kind of fluctuations in our mood. You know, Pisces likes to swim into like a little underwater kind of coral reef or it likes to hide. It's a double-bodied sign. So similar to Gemini, it has two sides. And part of Pisces wants to kind of join and it wants to come together and the other fish wants to kind of swim away so we can feel torn in some capacity. So looking at that square between the moon and Mars and also Neptune and Mars, which that'll perfect a little bit down the road as Mars gets up in degrees, is saying like, what direction am I going in? You know, why do I feel this way? And like, what's changing? And like, what's happening? What's wrong with people? This can be prime for, you know, falling asleep at the wheel, uh, making mistakes and making errors, not having clear visibility, saying things, talking about things, gossiping about things um, before we really know, not being really clear of other people's motives. You know, full moon in Pisces, like all the, all the, all the crazies have a tendency to come out more so than I think most full moons. So. Just be mindful that we don't have the path forward yet. We're not entirely sure what's happening. And even though this is a moon that's very much going to be focused on Neptune and also Jupiter, because Jupiter is the traditional ruler of Pisces, Mars is still loud and clear, right? And we've been seeing squares between the sun and Mars. We saw that actually during the Virgo new moon, the last new moon we had. So that energy is continuing to kind of ruffle some feathers. We've also recently seen Venus in a square with Mars, although I'm not mad at that. That's been, that's been kind of like some good uh, friction as far as I'm concerned. Now, on the flip side, Jupiter, right? Jupiter, the traditional ruler of Pisces. Jupiter in Pisces like knows no bounds. Like there's no, there's no um, fence, there's no containing it. You can't lasso it. It's really expansive, it's emotional, it's psychic. And that's where we've seen like all of this flooding of downloads, flooding of, 
sensitivity, of compassion, but also of people who are just kind of like at their wits end and feeling like they're kind of losing it. Now, once, once uh, Jupiter has moved into Aries, which is a very hot and kind of dry um, sign, it's been more action oriented. So if you think back to when Jupiter was in Pisces earlier this year, lots of like uh, magic and manifestation and prayer and lots of like psychic insights and then boom, it goes into Aries and we're like, okay, I saw the vision, I talked to my psychic, my therapist, it, I saw it in the cards, this is what I'm getting started on. Now Jupiter will drop back down into Pisces, but that's not gonna be for a couple months, so don't worry about that. Just know that now it's in an action-oriented sign, okay? So we have Pisces, which is like, let me rest and retreat, like hang out, eat some snacks, you know, binge on some Netflix. It's in an action-oriented sign. And Jupiter happens to be in opposition over here to Mercury in Libra. Now, Mercury is actually stationing. If you look at this, it looks like it's retrograde. It's stationing. Um, but the retrograde is just getting ready to begin, so it's really strong, right? So Jupiter, which is also the ruler of the moon, can suggest that um, many of us will have downloads or will have a breakthrough or will be really focused on prayer or meditation or really motivated for something that we feel energetically. And perhaps maybe we're really excited to share that insight with other people because the opposition to Mercury is like, hey, I had this experience, I had this dream, I made this thing, I created this thing. Uh, what do you think? And because Mercury is stationing, uh, very strong, I'll get into that in a second, but this can just be pops of unexpected good news. Now it's about a three degree opposition, so as Mercury turns retrograde in Libra, it will actually oppose Jupiter several times. So we'll have lots of opportunities to gain insight, share with others, get feedback, have great constructive criticism. We wanna use the Mercury retrograde in Libra almost as a mirror to be able to take a look at how we relate with other people, what's working, what's not working, how do we learn from that, and how do we take that experience and work on ourselves and the relationship with ourselves so we can show up better in relationship to others in general. But look for like the cosmic coincidences, somebody who's like, I had a dream about you, or I was just thinking about you. Like these things can come up during the time of this uh, full moon. Also, we've got Jupiter that's still in a slight sextile to Mars. So there's lots of action and motivation and things like that. So those of you guys who have a lot of mutable placements, and I'll get to the specific degrees, just know that you, you might feel this a little bit more, particularly um, you know, obviously Pisces, but also Sag, like if you've got placements in Sagittarius, that's around, you know, 16 to 19 degrees, you're probably really, really going to feel this because you're going to see a grand mutable cross, uh, because you will be the sign that makes up the difference. And you're going to see lots of change coming as a result of this full moon. As always, I'll take you guys through the 12 signs. I'll tell you where it's going on. Um, so let's move down this a little bit. Something else I have noted is that we have Mars, Venus, and the Sun, okay? So Mars and Gemini. Gemini is traditionally ruled by Mercury. It's about communication, the messenger God. He relays messages from the heavens to all of us mortals. Nowadays, we see it as emails, text messages, phone calls, you know, stuff like that, Zoom meetings. Uh, we've also got Venus in Virgo, which is uh, also ruled by Mercury. And we've got the Sun in Virgo, also ruled by Mercury. Now you're like, how does a planet, how is a planet ruled by a sign? No, no, no. What I'm, what I'm saying is, is that all of these are kind of bringing those mercurial energies because the planets are in Mercury-related signs. So <clears throat> we're going to see a lot of Mercury themes coming from this full moon because there's so many squares and also because the sun is in Virgo, we focus on Mercury. Well, Mercury's turning retrograde and it's opposed Jupiter. So it's like wonderful time really from this moon from the next two weeks until we get to the new moon in Libra and we're gonna balance some stuff out better. We're gonna look at things and go like, what's not working? And like, where am I being overly idealistic and not seeing something clearly? Or like, where am I eating too much? Or where am I sleeping too much? Or where am I just hiding out and not showing up, right? And on the flip side, if you've been doing too much, it's like, okay, we need to, 
we need to ground ourselves out a little bit and we need to allow ourselves to just unwind, rest, recuperate, find time for inspiration and allow that to flow inward because Pisces is a water sign. We need to be in the flow. But just know that between the mutable squares, the fact that we've got just a lot of real interesting mercurial energy, our minds are changing, our ideas are changing, our direction is changing, everything is shifting, and we're realizing possibly that another path is opening up or that there's another way of living our life without feeling like we just have to be grinding 24 seven, right? Which is kind of ironic, it's the end of summer. Many people are like, okay, back to work, back to school, we gotta get stuff done, which can make us feel a little bit more exhausted, a little bit more tired and a little bit more kind of scattered, especially when we see squares to Mars in Gemini. That, that is the word, scattered. But really what we're experiencing is changes. So I would say roll with the, roll with the change, take note of what's kind of coming up for you. Now, during the full moon, like I said, we see moon conjunct Neptune, which is very sensitive, very dreamy, but it can be very reclusive. It can need its own space. It can not be sure of its feelings. It can be a little fearful, okay? One thing you guys wanna watch out for during this full moon is fear porn, <laughs> my favorite word. Um, because Mars in Gemini is very much the media, it's talking heads, it's points, it's, uh, two different situations or kind of a division of um, perspectives or narratives that are coming up. And I've just noticed time and time again, moon goes into Neptune, it comes into a square with Mars. It can kind of be like you're hearing one thing on one station, one thing on another, it's stirring things up. We know that Virgo rules health, right? It rules nurses and hospitality and anything in regards to organization, diet, gyms. So it's very likely that just through the, the Virgo season in general, these topics become really big around the world. But with an opposition to uh, Moon Neptune, which really is about hospitals, right? Prisons, hidden spaces, things that are uh, kind of swept under the rug. This may be a full moon that's going to produce some not so factual pieces of information, possibly things that you know were intentionally kind of hidden or dismissed, but maybe we're coming back, we're taking a look at it. Did we have the numbers right? You know, Did we handle it appropriately? Do we really know what we're talking about? Trust that you know, the planets in Virgo are trying to figure that out. Mercury going retrograde back into Virgo is definitely going to also uh, go deep with its trines to Pluto and we're gonna uncover some stuff, but it's gonna take some time. We're gonna, we're gonna need clear into probably that, that Libra new moon, and even then some to sort some of this stuff out so we can get better into balance. And I think a lot of people are concerned. They're, they're worried about the state of the world or whether or not it's safe out there or if it's safe to travel or anything in regards to health. And I would just say, be careful with whose advice that you buy during this time. Now, the moon is also going to be in a positive uh, 60 degree angle. This is called a sextile and it's sextiling the north node of the moon. So its own, its own node and Uranus in Taurus. Now, the north node of the moon is like where we would like to go. It's strange, it's unusual. Um, it can be new to us, something that we have yet to learn. So the North Node in Taurus is money, food, pleasure, security, stability. Now it's been rocked a little bit because Uranus has been in close proximity to the North Node the last couple of months. But when the moon is in a sextile to its own node, it's almost saying, think back to um, when we had all those conjunctions in Pisces, I think it was like, yeah, it was like, you know, end of March through May, Jupiter, Neptune, Venus, Mars, all those planets went through Pisces and it was sextiling Uranus in the North Node. I remember telling people like, this is where the dreams are made. This is where we, we get on our knees, we pray, we chant, we give it to, you know, the universe, we hold space, we manifest, letting Taurus know that in May, this is when we start building it, okay? so. This is the imagination train Pisces to Realityville and what Taurus is ultimately going to build or craft or put together physically for you. Same energy, guys. So now we've got the full moon in Pisces, sextile the North Node, which is saying, you know what? I'm finally coming to this realization of what I believe in or what my dreams are or where I've been going wrong, or where the blind spot has been. Let's change it, right? Sextile to Uranus. 
Or it can be like, you know, this is where I've totally messed up. I've mishandled things. I've been kind of spiraling on my own worst enemy. Um, and this is the physical change that I need to make. Or this is the physical things that are happening financially or with my body or with my resources as a result of, of not doing anything at all. So it really just kind of depends on your own natal chart. Obviously, these are general predictions, but it's, it's, I'm getting as specific as I can. Um, the next aspect is going to be the moon square Mars and that's emotionally intense, changeable, you know, Mars can be the motivator that's like, get going, you know, you, you've slept in, like you set three alarms, like what are you doing, get up, get your, get your act together, can be a little pushy, can be a little aggressive, but still changeable. And then we've got the moon that um, is going to be in opposition to Venus in Virgo right over here. Um, and that can leave us reaching for more, wanting more, you know, wanting more love, wanting more pleasure, not being as pleased with things or wishing that we had something else. So you may even start feeling that actually, I think on the ninth, because the moon will be in those early degrees making the opposition to Venus as well. Uh, we've got moon sextile Pluto and Capricorn. So here's the moon sextile to Pluto. It's a loose sextile, but still, I mean, you know, you got to, you got to take your support where you can get it. I see this as deep and transformative, the ability to detox, purge, release, and let go. Very magical. I love Neptune and Pluto kind of working together. Very enchanted, very witchy, great for working with like the element of water. Um, or even earth to be able to ritualize something or do something um, prior to doing any like divination work. So if you're somebody who wants to work with tarot or crystal balls or dream interpretation, you know, this is a really powerful time to do some of that stuff, especially if you're charging things. The sun is in a square to Mars. It's about a six degree square. It's, we're seeing it kind of work its way out because the square has actually been more intense this last week, but that's about taking action, making changes, making tweaks, and like something that's pushing us, right, to actually make those changes. So that energy is kind of to fade a little bit, but it's still in the midst of this full moon. So you might feel an impulsiveness, like I got to do this, I got to say this, you know, I got to fix this. But you want to keep in mind with the squares to Neptune, something's not clear, it could be messy, we could miss details, we could break something, like it's, it's not something that you want to rush into and make a decision, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then we have the Sun trine Uranus and the North Node in Taurus, which I'm a fan of. I feel like this is really grounding energy, especially because Virgo is so specific, so particular. It wants to break things apart, look at it, you know, check everything, clean it out, put it back together. So Virgo is, is the sun in Virgo is really adamant about being like, you know, what do, what do we need to do to make this more solid? What do we need to do to produce more income, to eat better, to clean up, whatever, um, and perfect? And then also with the trying to Uranus, it's about making these, um, being very critical and being able to kind of make these decisions and judgment and how it actually leads to uh, taking action and uh, these actions will lead to more innovation and more freedom. So wonderful time to be kind of working if you're trying to problem solve. However, the sun is in a slight opposition to Neptune. Now it's not exact, right? So it's about what? Uh, seven degrees away or so. After the full moon and the days to follow, the sun will oppose Neptune and that's definitely going to be even more unclear um, so it can feel a little, you know, foggy, you know, draining, lost. One of the notes that I, I put on here was, um, you know, if, if you're not sure with this full moon, sleep on it. Like literally, Pisces is about the bedroom. It's about rest and recuperation. And I think with Mercury stationing, squares to Mars, oppositions to Neptune, if you're feeling pushed or rushed into something, if somebody says, don't worry about the details, just sign it, just do this, just do that, uh-uh. Just tell people, give me a few days. Let me look, look it over. I'm going to sleep on it. Let me get back to you, right? That's how you want to handle this because we don't want to be jumping into anything, hoping for the best because there can be some missing pieces and some things that are not entirely too clear. Uh, Venus and Virgo is still kind of in a slight square to uh, Mars and Gemini. And uh, that's still you know, bringing up some passion, but also some friction. I think that it's also about communicating our desires with Mars and Gemini. 
And the squares to Venus in Virgo is just changing things up. It can be a little bit more critical, but it's critical in a way that's uh, constructive criticism because we want to see people be at their best, but you still might be feeling that, you know, when Venus and Mars are in some tension, it does kind of represent like a battle of the sexes that might be going on at the time of the full moon. We see the return of the Saturn Uranus square uh, from here on out, guys, you know, September, October, that square intensifies. Now we know we had three of them in 2020. It's been really having us think about the structure and long-term goals of Saturn, where we're locked into something. We know that we need to do something a certain way when it comes to our goals, when it comes to society, when it comes to you know, uh, the, the planet, right? Saving the planet, but also our friendships as well. And with that harsh square between Saturn and Uranus, it's saying, you know, do we stay with what's tried and true or do we break out of the system, Uranus and Taurus? Do we look for liberation, look for freedom? So we're gonna feel that intensification that's kind of setting up. It's only gonna get more intense as we get to uh, the next month. Um, and just notice the pressure to innovate or break new ground, you know, for future goals. Like I said, Mercury stationing. So you're going to see the retrograde happening right around this time. Um, it's stationing at eight degrees. When a planet is stationing, it's getting ready to retrograde or go direct. Very strong, bringing a message, a time to reflect on relationships and assessing, assessing. I like that word. In Libra, assessing relationships, assessing fairness. I think we're going to hear a lot of stuff about laws and regulations and personal rights. Jupiter and Libra retrograde, excuse me, Jupiter and Aries retrograde opposite Mercury and Libra, which is like, who's deciding what we can and cannot do, what our personal rights are when it comes to ourselves, how we govern ourselves, our body, how we defend ourselves, that kind of stuff. Still important because Jupiter is uh, somehow tied to this. Um, and in that case, you know, I think also with Mercury stationing and uh, coming into not just an opposition, right? Big conversations, ideas, um, constructive criticism from other people, you know, especially in our relationships, but it's also going to be in a trine to Mars in Gemini. So, you know, I think that with, with that trying, it's like, let's talk about it, okay? If something's a problem, let's make it bigger. Let's not avoid the problems. Let's not sweep it under the rug. Let's not act like it's no big deal because that's what got us into some of these situations in the first place. We are gonna continue to see squares that are happening with Mars um, and it'll really start coming into a square with Neptune and also start coming into a square um, again with, uh, with um, not with Venus, but it's gonna come into a square with probably Mercury, if I think about it, eh, slightly. I think Mercury's gonna start coming out of it now that I think about it. But being that Mars rules the South Node, what we're releasing and letting go of, and Gemini, how we're talking about it, as it squares Neptune, it's like all the conversations that we haven't had because it's uncomfortable, because we're people-pleasing, because we don't wanna hurt feelings, it will likely lead to, um, it can be resentment, Mars square Neptune. It can be um, also just lacking the capability of being able to communicate effectively or honestly. I think that could be another issue that we could see with that as well. So if something's a problem, make it bigger, talk about it, find a way through it, align with other people, you know, get feedback, get the support, get assistance, get a counselor, get a therapist, uh, get a reading, you know, Libra can represent. Uh, your counselor or even your astrologer. Now some ritual ideas for this full moon because we're working with a full moon in a water sign, water, baths, soaks, lots of hydration, right? I think of like salt baths and scrubs, uh, divination if you wanna like break out your tarot cards or if you wanna sit and meditate, do some breath work and also find a way to incorporate the element of water into some kind of ritual, especially if you like water scrying just rest, recuperation, um, dream work. So dreams can be very strong. There can be lots of symbolism going on. Primarily, I think, because we have a full moon in Pisces, which is just very um, uh, sensitive and it has a tendency to just absorb everything, right? So we might notice that we are going to be a little bit more empathic than usual. Pisces rules the feet, so it's like great time to like soak your feet, you know, soak in the tub. Go to the beach if you live somewhere that's still warm, if you want to 
um, do a detox, you want to do a cleanse, especially with the Neptune sextile Pluto, it's wonderful. Pisces rules the feet, so reflexology can be good. Um, and any, anything like that that's going to just help you rest and recuperate. Now, those of you guys who are going to feel it the most, um, so obviously it's a full moon that's at 17 degrees. So if you have any personal planet, sun, moon, rising, or a personal planet between 17 and 19 degrees of Pisces, you will feel this. This is going to be a full moon that is going to relate to the theme of that planet, or if it's in, in an angle on like your ascendant, for example, a completion for yourself personally. Uh, for the mutable signs, okay, for the rest of you, Gemini and Sag and Virgo, um, if you have any placements 17 to 19 degrees, you'll be experiencing a square, especially Sag, pay attention, because that'll be a grand fixed square, excuse me, a grand mutable square. Um, for 17 to 19 degrees of Cancer or Scorpio, you will be experiencing a water trine, okay, because we got the full moon in Pisces. So you're going to really benefit because you're going to get a sextile, from planets you know, like you know in Virgo, and you're also going to get um, a, a trine from the full moon. This is about stepping into feelings, okay? So this is about um, opening up to feelings and how you feel about some of these changes that are going on. Can make you more sensitive, can make you more emotional. And for 17 to 19 degrees of Capricorn or Taurus, you'll experience a sextile from this full moon, which is supporting energy. It means it's funneling energy into you, but we know with sextiles, we have to take the initiative. We have to make the work happen. Uh, quite frankly, I think that this is just much, much more challenging for the mutable signs because we have so many planets in mutable signs. Um, so you guys are really gonna feel the pressure more than most. Now I'm a Western astrologer. For my predictions, I always do whole sign, so you guys are going to want to listen to your rising sign, your sun, and then your moon. Rising is the horoscope you should be reading. It's going to tell you where these things are happening in your life, so you can pull your chart out and take a look where Pisces is. Your sun sign is going to relate to your ego, your happiness, your career, your personal overall kind of goals, and the moon sign relates to your emotional goals and your emotional health your home, maybe even your family or your relationship. Get into the habit of, of listening to all three of them at the same time. If you can, if you've got the time to listen to it, please do. All right, so we're gonna start with Aries and Aries rising. I'm gonna work with my Victorian romantic deck today. All right, so um, for Aries and Aries rising, obviously a lot of what I was saying relates to you. So you're like, yeah, I know. Um, we have got a full moon in Pisces, and this full moon is going to be taking place in your 12th house. So um, this deals with things that are hidden, stuff that's being wrapped up, stuff that's more spiritual. Great time for a retreat, great time for like a meditation class. You know, if you want to get some hypnotherapy in, anything like that, it's, it's a great time to do that. Now, this full moon is going to be in a square with Mars, which is your chart ruler. Mars in the third house is speeding up the mind, communication, ideas, short distance travel, writing. Great time to like meditate and journal with the square. That's a positive way that you can use it. Uh, if you're tired and you're run down, you know, running tasks and answering phones and doing things are going to be agitating. You're not going to want to talk to people. Put your phone on, do not disturb, sleep in, take a break, because I think that it's the best way for you to kind of get a hang or a handle on rebalancing either health or schedule or work things. You can be a little bit more accident prone also because of the aspects to your sixth house. So my advice would be um, during this full moon, take some quiet private time to just reflect, right? That's all you need to do. And just start thinking about what it is that you wanna create within your life, specifically within your spiritual routine or within your home because the moon rules your fourth house. So that way you can um, allow yourself to have a little bit of downtime from all this work that you're doing. If you've been having relationship challenges or things like this, wonderful time for like some kind of therapy or like getting away and doing something with a loved one so you can get a little bit of a break, to be honest with you. <laughs> all right, so let's see what the cards have to say for you, Aries. I get two of swords. I'm wondering like, what are you going back and forth on? What are you thinking about? What are you trying to decide whether or not you're going to 
choose, right? It's like, do I do this or do I do that? I mean, mental stress kind of comes up with the two of swords for me. It makes me feel like you are trying to pick a lane. You're not sure what you want to do. There is a sense of you maybe feeling stressed or you're in a dilemma where you're like, I really need to be working, but I really need to, you know, take some time off or I have to get all of this stuff done, but like, I really want to be able to take a nap. Like until you calm the mind, it's going to feel kind of stressful, to be honest with you. And what you're learning is how to communicate more efficiently with other people. And if you're overwhelmed, sometimes it's just putting like a forward message on an email or drafting a text that you send everybody that's like, hey, I wanna get back to you, but I'm swamped, I can't right now, you know, please be patient, I'll get back to you when I can. So you have time to kind of better deal with some of this mental stress, okay? Hopefully that's helpful for you, Aries. Okay, Taurus, hope you're doing well. Um, so you have got a full moon in Pisces happening in your 11th house, okay? This deals with um, your friends, your networks, your goals. It can be a, a party with friends. It can be a goal coming true or something coming to fruition that you've been hoping and that you've been waiting for. Um, this can also be for you um, some sense of like an illumination through a conversation that you have with people because it involves the moon, which is your third house lord. I like it for you because it is making sextiles to your first house and it's allowing you to become more aware of your goals. Sometimes you need other people to ha hash that out with or talk about that with or come to this realization. So that way you can change and transform or come more so into the person that you're becoming with your honest and your sign. Friends may encourage you, right? They may say to you like, yeah, do it. You know, you've got my support or we'll help you or something like that especially if it's anything in regards to like wanting to make changes in your career or wanting to kind of collaborate and work with you. Now, the challenge is, is that you have a square from Mars in Gemini, okay? And Mars is in a square with this full moon. And Mars in your second house tells me that you're really adamant about um, having buying power, purchasing power, spending power, wanting to make more money, right? And Mars is the ruler of your seventh house of relationships and also the 12th house, which deals with hidden spaces. So there is this subconscious drive to be working with a partner right now. And the goal here is to be able to achieve all of the dreams that you're wanting to achieve. And it's a little tense because it does require a lot of creative work. Um, and it also might be drumming up business for inv investments, you know, bringing in money from creative projects, the goal with a partner to be able to invest, to make money, to spend money, to have more free time, to have more time, to have play time, to have vacations. The partnerships that come into your life that are pushing you to really work on your self-esteem, to stand up, to build, to build yourself up but also working and collaborating with another person to kind of build resources if you're looking to have children. So that could be something else that's coming up for you, Taurus. Let's take a look at what the cards say, but I mean, yeah, that could be a fun party with your friends, you know, a full moon conjunct Neptune sounds like a soiree or an excellent get together, hanging out, watching movies, having a good time. The card that I get is the Four of Cups. Um, how appropriate. I can think of like Neptune energy in the Four of Cups is like, yeah, everything's great, but it's not good enough. You know, it's like, it's not always being appreciative of what you have and uh, feeling like things aren't really totally bringing you happiness. And you might actually look around and kind of realize like, I'm holding myself to a really high standard. You know, you have to kind of take a look around and see what you've built or what you've created, what you've completed. It might take other people around you to be like, you should be stoked, look at what you did. And you're like, yeah, it's whatever. Listen to people around you because they're gonna be giving you feedback and telling you um, how much you've accomplished and how great it is. Um, but also it's to kind of keep you humble um, at the same time and kind of realizing that you've, you've got a lot going on and you can hold yourself to some particularly high standards. Now, if you're feeling um, like nothing interests you, this can be a, a turning point where you find an interest suddenly, but it requires you to look beyond what's just in front of you, okay? Hopefully that's helpful for you, Taurus. Let's now switch this to Gemini and Gemini rising. Gemini, you have got a full moon happening. That's a, that's, a, that's a really big full moon. You've got a full moon happening in Pisces in your 10th house. 
Uh, this is all about career presentations, responsibilities, showing something, okay? Showing something. This can be financial presentations, things that you've been working hard on, but this can also be responsibilities relating to home and family, financial responsibilities relating to home and family. Full moon in the 10th house could be like a, you got the job, you got the position, or you're retiring, you're completing something, you're done, you're wrapping something up, a big project, and having to show it to other people. And it, it looks like it was a lot of work and it looks like it's taken a lot of uh, time and effort and you've put a lot of talent into this, right? So the full moon, a little tricky for you, Virgo, excuse me, Gemini. <laughs> Can you tell Mercury's in shadow? Gemini. Because you've got the full moon squaring your ascendant and also squaring your fourth house. So Mars is the focal point here of the square. And it almost seems like you're really pushy or you're adamant and you're like, I got to get this going. It's got to be on time. Don't screw it up. Don't show up late. Fix this, fix that. Like there is like a real assertive energy that's coming from this where you're either um, really all about your schedule or all about getting something organized or getting something set up. Um, so it can, you know, come together beautifully and like seamlessly without a hitch. Um, even in spite of the square, the fact that you're having sextiles to your 12th house tells me that you're doing a lot of work in terms of your vision, you're working on screens, you're putting things together, there's collages, like there's things that are coming together where you're like, okay, uh, I'm just gonna stand in, 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 in the back and I'm gonna watch this like all kind of go down or I'm directing something or I'm behind the scenes in some way. A lot of faith will take you a long way here, Gemini, in terms of being able to see some of this stuff to fruition. With uh, Mars being here, just don't be too hasty is my advice. You know, don't be too aggressive. Let things kind of flow. Let the presentation or let whatever is going on work-wise kind of happen. If there's people who aren't really doing their job at work or whatever, watch your words because things can get a little intense. The card that I get is the Page of Pentacles. Uh, Page of Pentacles is about um, planting seeds, which is interesting, or it can deal with a younger earth sign. So it can be a Capricorn, Virgo, or a Taurus. But I think this is like saying like you're learning, like you've been learning something new. So if you're training for some reason at work, you're training someone else, be patient. If you're just getting the ropes or the hang of something, or you're finally feeling like you're picking up the skills, or there's new opportunities to see financial growth at work, it makes sense. I mean, the moon does rule you know, your second house. So you might find that there's a way for you to be able to, you know, make uh, a transition at work or move to a new department or you get wind that, you know, somebody might be stepping down and you're like, oh, there's an opportunity. Like there's a possibility for me to be able to uh, launch something. Now, if you are launching something, you're already putting something out there, it'll have a return. But Page of Pentacles is saying this is just the beginning. So if you're doing something new and you're like, let me see if it sells, let me see if it works. You might look around and go, wow, I think this could be a thing. I think it has room for growth. Okay, perfect for a full moon. Good job on you, Gemini. I hope it goes well. We've got Cancer and Cancer rising. Uh, we have got a full moon in Pisces, and it's a sister sign. So that means it's going to make trines to your placements in Cancer. Now, a full moon obviously is a completion. It's in your ninth house. Um, which is all about your beliefs. It can be travel, it can be education, publishing, legal situations, it can be foreign trips, but really it's about your beliefs, okay? It's about your belief system, Cancer. What are you believing in? Where do you need a little faith? Where do you need help with a guru or a mentor, right? Now, um, this is going to be in a square to Mars in your 12th house. And I think a lot of this for you is uh, where you're letting go and letting God, okay? You're not feeling like you need to control everything right now. Mars rules your natal 10th house. It also rules your fifth of creativity. I'm wondering if this is about you talking to a mentor, talking to a teacher, uh, completing a trip, planning, you know, some kind of continuing education. Maybe you're trying to publish something, especially if you're in that field creatively or advertising or sales. Um, it can also tell me that there is a need for you to talk to somebody because the moon rules your chart to kind of help guide you so you can kind of better put together professional stuff behind the scenes. 
Um, you may have to travel for work, that is possible. You might find that you're having to go a little bit further away than where you're used to working or that you're working kind of in private or in a back room somewhere. Even in spite of some of the squares with Mars, I think the trines to your placements and also the fact that we do see a loose uh, water trine that's happening, including the south node in Scorpio, can be very romantic. It can be very inspirational. It can give you lots of creative energy. So if you're a writer or if you're somebody who is a creative or a filmmaker or a designer, it is just, it, it's just wonderful energy. On the other side of this, all this Virgo is also sextiling you as well. So it's allowing you to kind of really put your faith into action in your day-to-day -day routine and you'll be busy and you'll be communicating with people as well. So um, it's looking good for anything in regards to your ninth house topics, but I think the bigger picture is how you're opening up to a new belief system, how that's inspiring you to wanna do more work behind the scenes, how it's allowing you also to communicate more effectively with people and kind of strategize potential future opportunities in regards to your career. I get the star card, which is kind of cool because this deals with Aquarius and uh, Mars is building into a trine there. Perhaps in the weeks to follow, as you see Mars coming into a trine with Saturn, you're going to realize that in order for something new to emerge, something else has to release, it has to let go, that you're going through a change and a transformation. This is the healing after the tower moment. This is also talking about friends coming together with like-minded people, being able to see wish fulfillment. Um, so I think for you, it's in order to facilitate that, it's what do you believe in? What routines are you doing, right? What are you praying to? What are you believing in? What are you reading? What are you studying? And it's really important to embody this right now to see everything come to fruition. Good luck, Cancer. All right, so we have now got Leo and Leo rising. You have got a full moon in Pisces in the mystical, magical eighth house. Now, full moons are completions in the eighth house. It's dealing with sex, investment, intimacy, loans, uh, karmic entanglement with other people, um, sometimes taxes, sometimes inheritances, but also we can see payoffs happening here. So we had that new moon that was in your second house earlier uh, a few weeks ago that was all about setting new intentions for money, resources, uh, talent, but also your self-esteem. Now we see the full moon come together where sometimes payments are due. Sometimes we, you know, have to pay something off. Sometimes we find out about a loan. Sometimes we get a bonus here. So a full moon in the eighth house is really highlighting what we receive from other people, but it's spiritual, right? Pisces. Now the moon rules your 12th house. So I'm wondering if this is about rest and recuperation for you, healing, especially anything traumatic, if it relates to financial concerns, uh, you know, relationship challenges, if there is a woman that needs more peace uh, and recuperation, right, in your family. Um, it can be also you working with a woman, a healer, a therapist to help you through this process. Now the 12th house rules hospitals, so does Pisces. So for you, you want to be paying attention and really making sure your body is solid, it's strong, because um, there is an energetic impact with this moon on your body. Now we see a square to Mars in your 11th house, and Mars rules your beliefs and travel. It also rules your home. I'm wondering, is there a bit of a squabble you have with a female relative over your belief system over joint resources, over money owed. So if somebody's living with you, if somebody has helped pay for something, if they've loaned you something, if you own property, real estate, something with a relative, it could be a little bit of a squabble there. Um, and where friends maybe, Mars in your 11th house, are pushing you to invest more in yourself and let go of any pain or anything in relation to fear or isolation. But like I said, you know, the eighth house is a house that's very magical. It's hidden. It can be scary. It can be crisis oriented. So it's important to be paying attention to your mood and what's going on with you emotionally and where others are pushing you to get out of your comfort zone and believe in yourself more. Doing so might bring you a pay raise, might bring a pay off, an inheritance, or finally standing up and asking for what it is that you deserve in terms of money or intimacy. And the card that I get for you is <laughs> the Ace of Pentacles, of course. 
The Ace of Pentacles, you know, two jumped out with that and I grabbed this one. I'm curious what card this is. The Chariot and the Ace of Pentacles. So eighth house, other people's resources, the Chariot. It can be talking about the moon, Cancer, and what's coming. Are you trying to get a home loan? Um, are you trying to pay something off? You know, what's going on? The, the Ace of Pentacles is money, stability, security, uh, new seeds. Maybe you're finally seeing something pay off. Maybe you've been saving and you finally see like your number in your bank account and you're like, okay, I'm feeling solid. Or you're stoked because you've paid off a student loan or something that you owed and it had a psychological effect on you and now you're like bursting free from it and you're like, okay, it doesn't have a hold on me anymore. So good luck with that. Good luck with that, Leo. All right, so let's move to the next sign. We have got Virgo and Virgo rising. What's going on, Virgo? You got a full moon taking place in your seventh house of relationships. So others are going to be a huge um, factor during the time of this full moon. Now you've been noticing that all the planets going through your sign, it's been having you think about yourself, your body, who you are, what you need. Um, obviously super busy in regards to work and this full moon in opposition uh, to your planets tells me that now it's time to look at others. What do other people need? Now the moon rules friendships or goals. Neptune always rules your seventh house and this full moon is going to be in a square with Mars. Okay. Now, Mars is about what's changing and transforming at work. What can you achieve? What can you get? Um, you know, what are your, your motivations to achieve more, make more, all of that good stuff, especially with the sextile to Jupiter. You could be working your butt off and you can negotiate more money, better pay, better benefits. But your partners are likely to be saying to you in this uh, full moon, where are you? You know? Where are you? Why, why aren't you here? Or you can be feeling like they're acting a little Looney Tunes and they're a little emotional. Um, but equally, it can be a big shift in a relationship with the moon ruling the fifth house. It could be somebody who tells you, I'm falling in love with you. You know, I really care about you or, you know, I want to be with you and you make me really happy or let's come uh, stronger into union with one another. Now, similar to the other mutable signs, uh, Gemini and Sag, you know, and Pisces, you guys are going to be really feeling the square. And I would say there is a need to look at what you're willing to change and transform at work. Um, so that way you can go deeper into relationships with other people. You may not get along with everybody during this full moon. There can be some friction in relationships or at work and they affect each other, which in turn also puts the heat on you and you can be, uh, a messenger for peace and for love with the sun and Venus in your sign. You know, if you handle things with tact and diplomacy, you can be more understanding in a relationship. You can find the balance. And um, usually full moons in the seventh house, there is, there is a, a big shift in a relationship. So I can see people go to the next step. I've also seen some people who um, end relationships and they wrap them up. It's in a square to Mars in your 10th. And while the 10th house rules your career, it actually rules your partner's home. So if you are partnered with someone and you're living with them, there can be some tension that day or with roommates or with family. Um, and if relationships are wrapping up with the square to Mars, somebody could say, you know, I'm out of here or I'm coming over. We're going to talk about it. So look for that action as well. But for the most part, I feel like relationships, partnerships, other people, there is this opportunity to be like, oh, is this too good to be true? You know, like, are we, is this my person? I mean, some of you guys might be just totally enchanted with another person. Uh, so watch for that. Let's make sure that it's gonna stick. Virgo, okay. You got Mercury going retrograde back in your signs. You're reworking the way that you communicate with other people. You're learning how to be more open to partnerships and more vulnerable. The card that I get is the Wheel of Fortune. This is about Jupiter. Um, this is about expansion. You know, you've got Jupiter that's hanging out here in Aries in your eighth house. So it's also saying there is a need to uh, open up, to be more adventurous, to be willing to let the good in, to be willing to believe in uh, your happily ever after. It's also saying there's good changes coming. And I think the changes are across the board for you, for your career, for your relationships, but all have to change in order to better support each other. 
Um, it looks like there's going to be some positive things that are going on and probably leading to, to more bliss in relationships. So ones that are in relationships will get stronger. Uh, ones that are looking for somebody might find that somebody shows up that just really incentivizes them to make changes and like turn your whole life around. Okay. Hope it's as good as it looks for, for you, Virgo. Uh, now we've got Libra and Libra rising. Hope you're doing well. You've got a full moon that's going to be taking place in the sign of Pisces. Now that's going to be in your sixth house, Libra. Now, um, interesting that it, it's it's here. You know, it's highlighting similar to Aries, the sixth and also the twelfth house axis. You've got the Sun and Venus hanging out in your 12th house. So there is a lot of work going on behind the scenes, lots of organizing, focusing on mental and emotional health, spiritual health, cleanliness. With the opposition to the moon in your sixth house conjunct Neptune. So this is about routine. This is about finding a way to make your day-to-day -day life feel like it's in flow, like you're in a state of meditation. Equally, a full moon in your sixth house is like Cut the bad habits, okay? Like drinking, smoking, partying, oversleeping, overeating, overstressing. Um, being that you have Virgo in the 12th house, there can be lots of anxiety. And I think it's like showing you where you need to take practical steps forward to just rest and recuperate more. Because if your schedule, if you feel like you're drowning in it, it's gonna send you into a bit of a tailspin and you are gonna be doing these things. And guess what? It's gonna affect your ability to, to get work done and it's gonna affect your ability to sleep. Here's the good news. The good news is that um, it is it is involving the ruler of your 10th house, the moon. So I can see it's about getting organized, cleaning up your diet, um, finding like a spiritual practice or something that you can do fitness wise, like meditation, yoga, to find your peace in your day to day. If that means you need to take a nap in the middle of the day, so be it. If that means that you're getting, you know, so swamped by your workplace that if you you want to attempt to try to see if you can work from home for a couple days, not not a bad decision with the sextile to Pluto and Capricorn in your fourth. Um, for you, I have that this is all going to be about your health, your office space, your pets, your routines. But with the conjunction to Neptune, it tells me we want to dissolve old patterns, right? So you may be feeling more like. I know I have things I have to get done. I can't do it. I've got a long laundry list of things to do. And you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna get it done. I think where Aries rising is actually getting into action, you're taking a step back, you're resting and recuperating and you're preparing pretty soon for your birthday. Look for big changes though. Like now is the time if you've been working hard and taking care of your health or if you've been organizing an office or if you've been focusing on getting things clean, it might finally appear during the time of the full moon. But remember that this is about creating a schedule where you feel like it's in flow so you can't push it. So sometimes, sometimes you do need to rest a little bit for there to be a little bit more room for energy or inspiration, Libra. The card that I get is the Hierophant. Makes me feel like you need a professional to do this. It makes me feel like you need a trainer, you need an assistant, you need a housekeeper, like you need somebody to help you do this because how are you gonna get all that sixth house stuff done with the full moon if you're hanging out in the 12th house? So find that thing that you've been avoiding doing. Find somebody who can give you guidance or somebody that you can hire, somebody that you can trust to gain insight, to help you kind of strengthen and clean up that area of your life. Could be a trainer, could be an accountant, it just depends. Whatever you've been avoiding, you need some assistance here and likely somebody's gonna step up, they're gonna help you. This is a card for Taurus as well, so a Taurus might be involved in this in some way. Good luck, Libra. All right, so we move to Scorpio and Scorpio rising. What's up, Scorpio? You have got a full moon in Pisces. It's in a sister sign. I'm, I'm very interested to see how this plays out for uh, Scorpio risings. This is, a, this is a really nice full moon for you. So it's in a sister sign, so you're gonna see it's making 90 degree angles to your planets in Scorpio or to your ascendant. If you're a Scorpio rising, this is in your fifth house. Now the full moon obviously is in opposition to the sun in Virgo and Venus in Virgo, which is all about goals, friends, hanging out, doing things with other people, maybe socializing more with a romantic partner because Venus rules your seventh, having fun, being creative. But the full moon in your fifth house is all about completion of fifth house themes like pregnancy, love, romance, creative projects. 
So something is being highlighted here. And this moon is both in a square to Mars, okay, which is interesting. How are you doing with those Mars squares? Um, it tells me that, you know, something's changing and transforming. You're changing your motives, your drive, the way that you think and communicate with people. There's more action in uh, joint resources or making money with someone else. This Mars does rub up on the full moon, so it's the focal point. So really for you, the name of the game is change and transformation, merger with another person, talking about things that are scary, talking about money, talking about investments. If you can do that, you can find that other people's goals and your goals can align. And also with the sextile between these planets in Pisces, to the North Node and Uranus in your seventh house, it's like, oh my gosh, romance happens. And then it leads to innovations and breakthroughs in relationships, sextile Uranus. Uh, obviously full moons in the fifth house, uh, Scorpios, you know, this can be pregnancy. So you can see this a few days before up to a couple weeks after. So those of you guys who have been trying to conceive, you may find out that you're pregnant. There can also be a sense of uh, babies being born, projects being launched, especially if you're self-employed, and you do anything creative or anything on stage, um, it, it can be a time where you're just overflowing with inspiration and you're just really loving what you're doing. Very romantic time, great for dates, dating, romance, things like that, and going deeper with intimacy as well with that square to Mars, Scorpio. So let's see what the cards have to say for you. Three of Pentacles. Working together, you know, working together. Venus square Mars is like, what are you doing with another person, right? So find a way to have a creative project with another person. I think to diffuse some of the Venus Mars squares because you can find yourself at odds a little bit with a partner about a topic in your relationship. Um, if you are single, it's about, you know, getting out there and getting out of your comfort zone, socializing. You might go out with friends, meet somebody at a bar, fifth house that you didn't think you were gonna meet. You might also meet somebody who is like a teacher, an educator, they're culturally different. Maybe you're traveling, that can be something else that you can do. Um, but Three of Coins talks about working together as a team, perfecting something. So it's like, if something's not working, how can we come together and make it better? What are we uh, creatively creating together? Like, what are we producing together? So great for investments, great for relationships, great for business. Um, and to me, it seems like somehow there is a party of three. So it can be you and two other people, um, just something that's like really coming together beautifully that can also pr produce or yield some kind of financial result. Good luck, Scorpio. We've got Sag and Sag rising. Hold on to your short Sag. This is going to be a full moon for you because you are the missing piece of the puzzle in what is this mutable square. Intensity, pressure, things changing, don't have a meltdown. That's the only thing that I can really tell you, okay? Know that when you have these squares, several different areas of your life changes. So let's break this down for you, Sag. You've got a full moon happening in Pisces in your fourth house. It is involving uh, the moon, obviously, which is the ruler of the eighth. If you have recently moved um, and you have been feeling like it's taken you time to kind of get your house set up, it might finally happen. If you're looking to sell a home, move home, um, if you're looking to complete a home project, there can be themes going on relating to female relatives or the mother in some way. Uh, home loans, stuff in relation to that, um, inheritances, death, release, these things can happen as well because it's involving your eighth house lord. And we're seeing water trines in water houses. So that's a release. So it's quite emotional for you. Now it's highlighting the aspect of all this work you're doing out in the world, uh, in your career, versus how you really feel privately in your home zone and what you'd really like to be doing, hanging out in your kitchen, cooking, watching movies, being with your family, and you might feel a little stressed. The stress is coming from the fact that it's squaring Mars in your seventh house. So you've got a partner, you've got clients, you've got a business partnership, somebody who's like, keep going, don't stop, forward motion, eyes on the prize. Mars in Gemini in your seventh house is just like, keep going. And you're, you're feeling the pressure because there's either clients or other people who are really pushing you to like show up and complete something. And maybe you do need a little bit more rest and recuperation. Like maybe 
This is a time where if there is a family crisis or a home crisis or you're feeling under the weather and you need to kind of stay home and take a mental health day, you do it, especially because it's going to be scoring planets either in your sign or on your ascendant. So things are changing. You're changing. You're becoming a different person. Your home and your family's changing. Your relationships are up for a reevaluation. People are showing up in your life right now that are pushing you to get more done, to show up and to be your best self. And it's okay if you need to take a time off or if you're feeling a little emotional or a little run down. But if you have home projects, moves, or if you're wanting to close on a deal, something like that in regards to real estate, this would be the time, okay? So let's take a look. Let's see what the cards have to say for you for this full moon. Queen of Wands, thank God. <laughs> I was like... Are they going to make it? Uh, this is your card. So it's saying like, you're going to rise to the occasion. You're going to handle it. You know, you work well under pressure, obviously, or you like a good challenge. You don't mind getting your hands dirty, working up a sweat, um, feeling creative. And even though this can be very emotional, I think it's going to give you the opportunity to kind of express yourself creatively. So even if that's at home, cooking, painting, decorating, something like that. Now, other fire signs can factor into this as well. So if there's like a Leo or another Sag or an Aries in your life, watch for that. But this is about being able to express yourself um, in, a, in a private way. So I think instead of all the work you're doing out in the world, it's bringing it home and you're like, but what am I creating here? What's mine? So if you're feeling inspired, you wanna create something, you wanna start something, if you have like an at-home business or especially with Jupiter in your fifth, like if you have like a, a side hustle or a crafting business or anything like that, it looks like that's what you're gonna be doing to kind of like decompress, okay? Good luck. Now we have got Capricorn and Capricorn rising. What's going on, Cappies? Uh, you got a full moon happening in Pisces, and this is in your third house, which deals with um, communication, cars, siblings, contracts, things you're learning. It's kind of a hodgepodge. This is all about your, your daily routines and your neighborhood and where you find yourself. But it's a little deeper than that because it involves your seventh house lord. So it tells me you might be talking to siblings or relatives in the family, people who might be abroad, answering phone calls, emails, talking with a partner, maybe about moving or movement or what the plan is in regards to like a vehicle. You just, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's decent energy on tap. You know, we, we've probably heard by now the oppositions that we have here to Virgo. Um, so it's highlighting the third house of like kind of smaller details, your day-to-day -day life versus who, what you believe in, what you're actually learning, what you're traveling. It's hitting parts of your chart that deal with travel, law, legality, documents. So if you've been waiting for something to come through, if you've been waiting to hear on a visa, if you've been waiting to see if you're going to get a passport so you can book a ticket, you know, this might be the time. Um, it is in a square, okay, to Mars and Gemini. And Mars rules your house of home. So I'm wondering, are you trying to book travel home? Are you trying to move? Are you, you know, having some issues with your schedule or with organizing? Are you having conflict with your family? Are you trying to figure out how to kind of come up with a schedule your family can be around uh, you more or you can visit them? Do you have a relative that's dealing with a health issue and do you get a phone call that, you know, somebody's going through something and somehow you need to kind of jump on a plane or get involved or get an attorney involved? Listen for these things. In spite of that, you've got these planets in Virgo trining your sign, okay, and Pluto in your sign. And you've also got planets in Virgo trining uh, the north node Uranus. So you've got, a, you've got a, uh, earth trines that are setting up which is all about you, your body, what you create, what makes you happy, and where you're going and what you believe in. I say rise to the occasion, face the challenge in making changes in your daily routine. If that means you need to tell family what you're, you know, where you're overextending yourself so you can make time to get work done or do the work that you wanna do or travel if you wanna travel, so be it. If you are learning a language, uh, you know, wanting to complete a program, wanting to launch a website, wanting to launch a blog, a, fifth, a third house full moon is a great time to do it. And I'm loving the fact that it's sextiles Pluto. So it's giving you lots of room to kind of speak powerfully and be heard. 
It's also sextiling placements that you have in Taurus in your fifth house, which is about being creative and authentic. So watch the details. Timing can be off a little bit in some way. And uh, keep in mind we're Mercury retrograde shadow. Um, so you may want to use this time to build out a blog, build out a website, you know, get everything ready, proof it. And then um, when Mercury has gone direct, we're getting closer to like the mid-October time. That's a time that you would want to launch something. Okay. Let's see what the cards say for you. Buying cars, selling cars can happen here too. But with the square to Mars, I feel like you want to be careful. Something can be off. You can have some issues here. Five of Wands. I mean, conflict, you know, challenges, feeling challenged by other people, especially mentally or in terms of communication. I think that's the score to Mars in the six. You might find that like some family members can be really difficult, giving you a hard time, kind of stirring the pot a little bit. Um, when I see five of wands, it's combative energy. So it's reminding you to kind of like lay your weapons down. Um, you could be arguing with people at work too, because the sixth house, you know, Mars transit, it does in conjunct some of the placements that you have either as a Capricorn rising or planets in Capricorn. So you might be finding that you're like, you know, squabbling with, with coworkers or having issues or disputes about the schedule. And you are more accident prone as well. You're one of those signs because you got placements in the sixth house in a square. Lay your weapon down, know uh, which you know fights to fight and which ones to walk away from. Otherwise things can get kind of combative and you can find that there can be some uh, harsh words that can be exchanged and it, it, can, it can create some problems down the road, okay? So try, try to walk away if necessary and diffuse the situation. Good luck to you, Capricorn. We've got Aquarius and Aquarius rising. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to a full moon in Pisces in your second house of money and resources. So the second house deals with money, self-esteem, your talent, sometimes large purchases. This is a completion since the new moon that we had in Virgo a couple weeks ago where you were focusing on joint resources, saving, paying things off, long-term goals in terms of intimacy. Now we got a full moon here. So I want you to think about Go back to March of this year. Think about what you, what goals you've been setting about money, what you want to receive, what you want to be able to spend, all of those things. If you've been like, I need to be on a budget. Where is my money going? I don't know when money's coming in because Neptune is there. There can be some things that are unclear. This is a completion of all the financial stuff that you've been working on growing. So you, you can find that there is a positive thing that kind of manifests where uh, you know, a check comes in or a payment is made or there's a big purchase or sale. Something like that can happen with a full moon in your second house. Um, it is in a square to Mars in your fifth. And I'm wondering, like, are you having to pay for something for a child or a lover? Is that happening? The oppositions to all the planets in your eighth house talk about what you owe other people. So this could be like paying somebody back. This can be paying for a kid's tuition. This can be uh, a kid needing money or resources, and you're like, Ugh, okay, I gotta help them out, I gotta bail them out of this. Mercury will retrograde here as well, so there seems to be some kind of negotiation. Maybe it's like a debt consolidation, loan modification, and you're trying to kind of bring in more resources so you have more buying or spending power or investment power. You could be going ham buying some nice stuff for people, especially if you're trying to invest, a, um, in, excuse me, if you're trying to impress a client because uh, Mars rules your 10th house or you're trying to do something lavish for a date. It's okay. Um, just watch here because something in regards to money and spending and lending does somehow affect the family or roommates or property or real estate. I like these trines that are taking place because it does make me feel like there's changes on the home front, which means you have to go deeper into intimacy and joint resources, but you've been strategizing and planning how to facilitate making this shift. So, you know, just be careful with how you're, how you're spending um, just because you bring a lot in, you know, or you have some payoff doesn't mean that I would go and, you know, bet it all on something because you might be feeling a little bit more risky or daring with that as well. The other thing that I'm liking is that you have Mercury trying Mars. So uh, maybe you're spending the money on a program. Maybe you're spending the money on travel. You know, you're booking tickets or something. So that's one way that you can kind of work with this. But I think for many of you guys, I would just say be careful because in the days to follow, you're going to see that you're going to have um, the moon opposed, you know, 
still oppose uh, the sun. Then you're going to have the sun move through Virgo and oppose Neptune. So there can be some not so clear things going on in terms of transactions, money, what you're getting paid versus what you're paying other people. Double and triple check all of your accounts, passwords, things like that with the square to Mars. You might find out you have like a kid buying something on an iPad. I had a, a client the other day who had a, had, he's, he's having this square and uh, they were telling me that they let them use their iPad and they didn't realize they were signed into Apple and a bunch of food just showed up at the house out of the blue. <laughs> Mars in the fifth square Neptune. The kid ordered like three pizzas and a bunch of other stuff and didn't realize that they were on Postmates. So that's the kind of stuff that you can see happening here. All right, so let's take a look at what the cards have for you, Aquarius. I get the Knight of Swords. I have a feeling this is about how you're communicating with somebody or messages in relation to accounts or spending, how you're talking to your kids or your lovers about your financial situation or your strategy and your planning and how you're you know, talking that out with another person about your investments. Um, we're just more passionate in general. I mean, Mars in the fifth house is going to be a little bit more risk taking. And I think that that's very much the Knight of Swords. Um, but just watch out and make sure that you're not rushing into something because it seems like it's a good idea. You know, quick, get rich, quick schemes or something you want to watch for over the next week. And somebody might say, hey, invest in this. And you're like, yeah, let's do it. And then you're like, wait, where did my money go? And you realize it was a scam. Read the details, talk it all through, think it all through and look for exciting news that's likely to be coming your way about money or resources. All right, so now we have got Pisces and Pisces rising. Saved you for last, huh? This is your full moon, Pisces. I hope you're doing well. We've got a full moon that's going to be happening in your sign. And if you're a Pisces rising, it's in your first house, which is all about yourself, your body, your image, your personal goals. You're wrapping up and completing what has been six months of personal work on yourself. Now, a full moon in the first house can debut a new wardrobe, a new outfit. Um, it can also be about some major change with your body. So you can see physical changes, emotional changes. Full moon in your sign is going to have you more emotional, more empathic. Now, the moon is a sister sign, obviously, relating to cancer. Um, and we've got a water trine happening here. And that tells me that there's something going on in relation to being full of something, full of emotions, like full of love, full of compassion. Uh, but also the fullness can be in relation to pregnancy. So pregnancy, falling in love, uh, just feeling very romantic, feeling very sensitive, really connecting with younger people or children in some way. Um, this moon also sextiles Pluto, so it's helping you really get aligned, get aligned with your goals and uh, your, your desires for the future. And it is in a square to Mars in your fourth house and also uh, the sun in Virgo. So we see this mutable T-square here, all right? Uh, Mars being the focal point tells me that maybe you're moving, maybe you're traveling, maybe there's tension with uh, in-laws or roommates or family or people you live with. It is really being highlighted. Uh, maybe a partner is saying to you, I'm not happy with our living situation. I want to move or move to me or let's pick up and go somewhere. You do have a Mercury retrograde dropping from your eighth house into your seventh, so you're reworking lots of stuff in relationships, and I could see that a partner is kind of airing out some concerns and some issues that they have, um, and it might be about family or living conditions. Equally, partners from the past can come back with this retrograde, and it can impact how you're feeling or something about your emotions. Um, remember that a full moon in your sign is like you have become a fuller version of you. So you might be more emotional, sensitive. You might need more space from other people. You might want to be a little bit in distance from partnerships or even people that you live with and uh, can get a little sensitive, get a little touchy. The way around this is I think sticking to your goals, not um, second guessing yourself, not being too self-sacrificial and also communicating and expressing to people, you know, what you're really thinking behind the scenes. So that way you're diffusing any issues with friction on the home front, 
with family or with relationships or roommates. But yeah, this is going to be intense for you, Virgo season. It's also going to come back again, Sag season. So I would say you really got to take a look, even though the moon is in your sign. What do you love? What do you need, right? What do you want in regards to relationships? And expressing that can only help you get into better harmony with people who are in your private life. But uh, yeah, big changes in regards to your body and just bringing a lot of attention to you and how you feel. Pamper yourself, go to the spa, take some time, get a massage, um, take a picture of yourself. That can be something else. And all those planets in the seventh house are just other people are going to be drawn to you. Right. And you might be also connecting with people as well, because this is about what you're imagining, what you're manifesting, what you're envisioning. And you're bringing other people in and making big changes on the home front. Queen of Coins. So this can be dealing with a earth sign woman. So like a Taurus or a Virgo or a Capricorn. Virgo's in your seventh house. So I'm wondering, are you going back and forth with a Virgo? Um, are you having to communicate with an older female in some way? Um, are you getting guidance from an older female or a counselor in some way? Because that could be that seventh house energy. This is about feeling good in your body, feeling solid, feeling yourself, feeling secure, how you carry yourself and really knowing that um, you're doing everything that you need to do to kind of stand your ground. So sometimes a full moon in your first house is about being true to yourself. And this is trusting yourself. This is investing in yourself. And this is about feeling solid. So if it's not another person, this is you it can be great news also for positive health. So if you, there's been some health challenges, uh, overcoming that and being able to kind of put the kibosh on what has been some some health problems recently okay all right guys well it is a very magical full moon uh, i hope it it does well for everybody i hope you have all kinds of wonderful beautiful sparkly dreams and you're inspired and you're taking time to rest and recuperate you're kicking those bad habits. Let me know where is this uh, full moon taking place in your chart? Like I said, right around 17 degrees of Pisces. How are you feeling? What do you think is going to happen? Uh, is it happening around your birthday? Leave me your comments below. I'd love to hear from you. As always, if you guys want to book a one-on-one -on -one session with me, I would be happy to help you. Check out my links below. You can find my website at beyondtheveiltarot.com uh, where I have sessions that are a combination of tarot, astrology, and what I see clairvoyantly. And if you want to learn astrology with me or tarot, you can also check out the course page on my website. I've got beginners tarot and astrology. I also have a new webinar series that's coming out soon all about synastry astrology, relationship astrology, just in time for Libra season. And uh, yeah, there's all kinds of offerings there. So uh, take a look. I'd love to chat with you or work with you soon. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week and you guys take care.